old and busted, new hotness. <music> Greetings fellow makers, welcome to Prop 3D, your look into the world of 3D printing for prop and costume making. I'm Bill, and today I got some new bling! Whee! Whoa! I feel so pretty! Way back when I got married, I got this really boring little titanium ring, and I told myself someday I'll get a cool wedding band, but until then this would do. Well, I got my hands on the old Form 2 3D printer a while back, I got to play with that a bit, and I figured a small detailed piece like a wedding band or a costume jewelry piece would be the perfect thing to test out on such a sophisticated machine. So I made myself a new wedding ring. I designed up my model using Fusion 360. I found a whole bunch of different tutorials on how to make rings and how to make uh, tire treads like I did in my RC car tire tread video a while back. Basically, I made a ring that was the diameter of my finger and then I drew a pattern as a sketch and I projected that and patterned it around the ring until it was just right. Now for funsies, I printed this out on the Ultimaker at the highest setting in ABS to compare it to the Form 2. And I'll tell you what, that Ultimaker is no slouch and the model came out great. However, the Form 2 is just incredible. It took me a couple of tries. I printed out a handful of rings at different sizes and thicknesses until I got it just right. Each one of these prints took about four or five hours on the medium quality setting. Once I really had it dialed in, I printed it out in the highest quality setting for my final model. And once it was done, I took it off, cleaned it up in isopropyl alcohol, trimmed off all of the sprues, and I had myself a really nice looking ring. Of course, this is the resin that comes off the print bed, and I wanted my ring to be metal, like most rings are. So I set about making a mold of this piece. Now, something I didn't do to this part at all was sand it. That's right, at the highest setting off of the Form 2, it did not need any sanding. Now, I could have. I could have buffed it up a tiny bit, but I wanted to see how it would look without any further sanding. So I took that model and I clayed up a little bit of a pouring spout on it, and then I mixed up my silicone. For this one, I used Mold Max 60. This is a high temperature silicone, and you can pour molten metal into it. Well, some molten metals anyway. I poured this onto my little model, let the silicone cure, and I had myself a fancy pants little mold. Now this mold came out all right. I should have degassed the silicone. There were some tiny bubbles in there that affected the surface quality, but overall I was pretty happy with it. At this point, I was ready for casting and I went with pewter. Pewter is a low enough melt temperature that I can melt it at home on just a little burner and it'll go into this type of silicone without completely destroying the mold. In fact, we did a live stream on our Twitch channel. If you wanna check out that video, you can go over there and watch me bumble my way through learning how to melt and pour metal into a silicone mold. It did take me a couple of tries to really kind of figure out how to do some metal casting like this, but eventually I got a couple of really nice castings of my ring. Once they were cooled down, I could then set about finishing them. Now that big old pour spout needed to go, so I put it up in a vise and cut most of it off with a hacksaw. Then I set about removing the little bit that was left using some files and getting the finish on it to look pretty darn good. Pewter is a really soft metal and very easy to work with. So little files work really well, some sandpaper works really, really well. And of course you can use steel wool to buff the surface up and use some metal polish to make it look super duper shiny. Now, I wanted an additional bit of contrast on this ring, so I simply spray painted the whole thing with a dark brown spray paint, making sure to get it in all of the deeper crevices. Then, once that was dry, I just took a cloth and some rubbing alcohol and I rubbed the paint off of all the high points, leaving the darker points untouched below. What I ended up with was a pretty nice looking little new wedding ring that's made from real metal. It's got some nice contrast to it and I'm awfully proud of it. Now, I've been wearing this thing for about a week and yes, pewter is a very soft metal and especially since I run around in my shop all day using tools, this thing is getting nicked up a little bit. Even a little bit of sandpaper is enough to really mar the surface on it. We'll see how long this lasts. I'm gonna wear it a bit longer and 
Uh, I don't know, if it gets ruined, then I've got a mold. I can cast some more. In fact, I've got a spare ready to go as soon as the uh, one I'm wearing right now gets destroyed. <laughs> so overall, this is a really successful project. And going forward, whenever I'm building a costume, if there is a jewelry piece, a ring, a pendant of some type that I want to be real metal, this is a quick and easy way to do it. You could do it with any 3D printed piece. You could do it with any sculpted piece if you wanted to. And then you could mold it and cast it with just a few dollars worth of materials and you're good to go. You've got a real metal piece of jewelry for your costume. If you're looking to get into mold making and casting for metal like pewter, then you're in luck. You can go watch that casting video I talked about earlier. All the tools and materials are pretty cheap. The melting pot we used was about 30 bucks on Amazon and the pewter was maybe another 20 bucks. You can get going pretty cheap and really fast. As always, all the tools and materials that I used for this video are linked down in the description. So if you wanna get into this, then you know exactly what you need. Thanks for checking out the video and my new bling. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you challenge yourself to try something a little bit neat like this. Of course, we've got some other videos for you. We've got that Boolean Gemini ready to go for paint coming out soon. We've got eight videos out so far, so make sure you go check those out and get caught up as we finish it all up. If you're new, please go ahead and give a subscribe and a big old thumbs up for the video. And of course, we're gonna see you all next week for another edition of Prop 3D and the Boolean Gemini build. Have fun out there, you guys. Build some neat stuff and we'll see you all later.